Uh, so thank you for joining me tonight. I uh, appreciate you taking the uh, time out this evening to join us all uh, to talk to you uh, about digital implant workflows. Um, so thank you for that. Uh, the main purpose of this evening really uh, is to spark your interest um, in the digital implant workflow. Um, it might be something that you've thought of doing yourself um, or something that you're just curious about. Um, maybe you're placing implants already, but doing it in more traditional analog methods um, and interested in what digital could offer you. Um, but really, we just hope to provide you with enough information you need uh, to allow you to take that next step um, this evening uh, with your digital implant workflow. Uh, so the agenda that we have uh, for this evening um, we have got a short introduction of our host tonight. Uh, we will then walk you through uh, the main topic of this evening, which is called It's Time to Go Digital. Um, and we'll look at how uh, the digital trend is impacting digital implant dentistry, uh, or implant dentistry even. Um, and our clinician this evening will then share his insights in part three um, on this topic. Um, and we will take a look into his practice uh, and look at how he has embraced um, digital technology, um, which has allowed him to deliver digital um, implant workflows to his patients. Um, we will then look at how to pick the right digital implant solution for you and your practice um, and the criteria that you should consider before investing into any of this technology. Uh, we've also got a special demonstration uh, tonight. So I'm joined by a couple of my colleagues from Dents by Serona. Um, and we will be showing you a live example, um, live in the sense that we'll be using models, not actual patients, but a, a live demo nonetheless, um, of how, uh, of what essentially an integrated implant workflow um, would look like with the Prime Scan scanner I have sat beside me, um, as well as the Orthophos um, SL CBCT scanner. Uh, and finally, uh, we will take, uh, we will talk a little bit about what you can expect from Dents by Serona um, as your digital partner. Uh, and finish uh, with a Q&A session uh, I mentioned at the end. So again, uh, for anyone joining just a little bit late, please feel free to submit any questions you have in the chat uh, box this evening. Um, make sure you don't forget anything. Uh, so to introduce myself, uh, my name is Jack Hannam uh, and I'm the CAD CAM specialist for London uh, and the south of England, uh, stretching from Cornwall all the way up to uh, Norwich. Um, so I'm not a clinician myself, but I do have uh, lots of experience working with clinicians on a daily basis um, that are going through all sorts of um, different digital journeys, uh, whether that be with single visit dentistry, with implants, um, with orthodontics. Um, so I've worked with clinicians at every stage um, of each of those journeys. Um, I've been a specialist for over a year now, uh, and I've been working with dentists at Dents by Serona for over four years in other fields um, such as uh, endodontics. Uh, and I'm joined uh, by our guest speaker tonight. Uh, and where do I start? Um, so I'm sure you already know, but it's Dr. Michael Norton we have uh, with us here tonight. Um, and I'm sure he needs no introduction at all, um, but I'm obliged to give him one anyway. Uh, so Dr. Michael Norton is one of the world's most respected um, educators and researchers, and he is a specialist in oral surgery um, and really helped pioneer implant dentistry in the UK. Um, and since releasing his classic textbook, Dental Implants, a Guide for the General Practitioner in 1995, um, he has built a considerable portfolio of peer reviewed research. Um, he's been widely cited um, and is definitely one of the most sought after international lecturers in his field. Um, and I imagine everyone joining tonight is most likely joining for Dr. Michael Norton, so thank you. Uh, Michael, would you like to give a quick hello this evening? Hello, hello to everybody. Thank you for joining us. Cheers, Michael. So uh, tonight we will obviously focus on the digital implant workflow and all of the different steps involved. Uh, and with that, I would like to play a short video uh, which will help set the mood for this evening. The way we make a difference in the world of dental professionals is by looking at the big picture as much as at the small details. 
this means we don't only focus on individual products and services and make sure they are of the best quality. We also study how they can be connected to form the smoothest and most efficient process. In other words, we see everything in terms of workflows, how we can help people manage their time and effort while achieving the best possible results. A workflow can be a specific procedure, such as placing an implant. But a workflow can also be the whole journey of each patient through a clinic and what that experience is like. To put it simply, workflow is how well work flows. No matter which workflow we are looking at, our objective is always to make it as convenient, precise, and cost efficient as it can possibly be. This requires close cooperation with dental professionals, assimilating their experience and providing them with relevant education. And it requires constant innovation of products and solutions based on practical learnings and scientific research. It also requires that we explore the potential of digital tools to meet the needs of the future. But most of all, it requires an understanding of how people work and what gives them a sense of flow. So it's all about the flow. Uh, and there are, of course, multiple workflows in every part of dentistry, um, all looking to achieve a similar endpoint. Um, tonight, it's all about digital workflows for implants. Um, and in this section, uh, we'll look at what's happening in our in industry currently. Uh, so I'm now you know, sure everyone who is watching will agree. Um, observing um, trends in the and tr trends and changes in the industry um, is absolutely vital um, and that's both for myself as a manufacturer but also um, yourselves as, as clinicians uh, who run businesses we all need to recognize where things are um, going in order to stay competitive um, so what is your current project projection of the future um, and which trends are we seeing currently in dentistry um, I'm just going to play uh, another short illustration um, explaining what to expect um, in the next few years just within the dental implant market itself. With factors like changing eating habits, the increase in the average age, and the desire for the perfect smile, the number of dental implant treatments are surging. By 2025, the global dental implants market is expected to be worth $6.5 billion. With that type of growth, the tools you use, the way you communicate with your colleagues, the support you receive from your partners, and the transparency you have with your patients are crucial. Whatever role you have in dental implantology and whatever stage you are in your career, by connecting to the Dentsply Sirona Digital Implant Workflow, you have access to the most advanced digital technology, exceptional value from patient-specific products, and more time to focus on what matters most to you. With world-class digital technology and support, you can transform the way you work, from data capturing, planning, and guided surgery to the final restorative solution. Patients deserve the best possible care. Let's give it to them. Connect to the future. Future, digital Implant Workflow. So, as you saw in that video, um, with the expected value of the global dental implant market rising to what's projected to be 6.54 billion US dollars um, by 2025, so literally within the next sort of four or five years, um, the future is looking extremely positive for dental implants. Um, and making sure that you're equip equipped with the right digital technology today um, will be ex absolutely vital to ensure that you reap um, benefits of this trend in the future. Uh, so to quote Dr. Mark Ludlow here, um, working with digital techniques and a digital implant workflow empowers clinicians to offer safer 
more efficient treatment to their patients. Um, so hopefully after what you see tonight, especially from Dr. Michael Morton's talk, um, I hope you'll agree with that statement. Um, and on that, um, I would like to hand over to uh, Dr. Michael Norton. Um, please take it away. Thank you, Jack. Um, let's just get our screen up. Okay, are we seeing that? Looks good. Excellent. Well, first of all, let me thank everybody for tuning in tonight. Uh, and for those of you that were already uh, admitted from the waiting room for the poll, you'll be interested to know that it seems, besides the fact that you were all very excited, which is lovely to know, um, what really impressed me was that none of you uh, reported a fear of embracing the technology and very few of you felt you lacked the confidence. Um, so that's a very encouraging start because I don't mind admitting that maybe because I'm a bit of a dinosaur now, uh, but I did lack confidence and I did have uh, some fear embracing some of these digital technologies uh, because I come from a very analog world um, and it's the only world I knew. So uh, I'm suspecting that we've got a younger than perhaps usual audience. Uh, and if that's the case, that's great. Um, the other thing in the poll, thank you to those who felt they wanted to be inspired by me. I will do my best not to let you down. Uh, and certainly uh, in this short 40 minute segment, try and impart some information of value about digital dentistry. Um, so, the digital workflow. The digital workflow for me is not just about an intraoral scanner. It's about how that intraoral scanner links a plan to the execution and delivery of a superlative dental implant supported restoration. And in order to do that, you need a number of things, not least a dedicated implant that has been designed from the bottom up to be an implant for the digital world. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about that. Um, you also need uh, the uh, benefits that uh, are afforded us from the CAD CAM world and the printed world, uh, because uh, the days of, you know, casting models and so on and so forth will hopefully be uh, behind us. And the days of casting abutments or prepping abutments should also be behind us. Ultimately, this is all about delivering a very high value, precise, and as my friend Mark Ludlow said, precise and safe uh, outcome. So let us start then with the plan. Uh, I'm gonna take you through a case. Um, I, I, I'm not going into too much detail because I've only got 40 minutes, but um, there's a reason I'm using this case. Uh, but just to give you some background, uh, this was a patient missing his upper right, first and second molars that required a, a sinus lift. As you can see, a little montage in front of you. This was done on a staged basis. Uh, you'll see here there's um, an implant. That's not one of mine. Uh, it was placed in this patient before he came to me and you can see there's a bit of bone loss there. So whilst we were doing the sinus lift, we were also doing a, a decontamination procedure and attempting to repair some of some of the damage around that implant at, at the same time. Now, that's just a background piece of information because now the digital workflow starts and it starts here with a computer tom uh, tomographic scan, a CT scan, cone beam CT scan. And that cone beam CT scan uh, can be imported into the first building block of Dense Fly Serona's uh, digital uh, workflow world, which is Simplant. I've been using Simplant since the days of having photographic pictures uh, before we even had anything on computer. 
So from the very beginning, I've been involved with Simplant, indeed before Dentsply Serona um, took ownership of it. And you can see here that we're flicking between 2D images and 3D volume render images. And what you see here is me using the virtual tooth tool to establish the position, the shape, the size, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, of two virtual molar teeth. Now you might overlay these on a restorative radiographic guide. I didn't have a radiographic guide for just two teeth. I'm just using my 30 years of experience, but you can clearly see the quality of the images in terms of appreciating the sinus graft here, the consolidation of the graft, the location of the graft. And here you can see I'm placing implants. This is just a sort of a standard implant that you initially place, and then you bespoke it. So I'm working with the Astrotech uh, EV implant, and the blue color represents the 4.8 uh, millimeter platform. And we can even number the implants 1617 for the tooth position. And if we come back to the volume render, we can see how the access holes come through the mid occlusal table, which is where we want them. And if we just translucence, put the translucency on here, you can see how the implants sit very nicely within the body of the sinus graft. Now, you could take that information and you could, if you wanted, transfer it to the mouth using one of uh, Dentsply Serona's computer guided, uh, computed surgical guides, such as the SAFE guide or even a simple pilot guide. Uh, I'm, a, I'm quite a fan of the pilot guide just to get me started. I don't use a lot of safeguards myself only because uh, I've been doing implants for 30 years and I guess uh, maybe you could call it arrogant, I don't know, uh, but I guess I feel I can do the job uh, pretty accurately without a fully guided surgery. Indeed, these two implants that you're looking at have just been placed uh, through uh, two flapless punch hole incisions just using my experiences of having done the surgery on Simplant and translating or transferring that information from a Simplant to the mouth using uh, eye to hand coordination, if you will. And I've done these on a transmucosal basis. So the two little punch holes are plugged up with the healing abutments, it's flapless, it's minimal surgery, minimally invasive, minimally traumatic. Now, it's very important at this point that we zoom in on the implant. Uh, I'm not here to try and persuade any of you necessarily to work with the Astrotech EV implant, but there is something very specific about this implant that is unique in the industry to the digital workflow world. And that is, if I just run that slide again, that when we developed this implant, we developed it with an asymmetric seven slot site specific one position only index. If you consider that uh, if you're using uh, CAD CAM abutments, uh, such as the Atlantis system, um, these abutments are not designed to benefit from multiple positions like a stock abutment where you might want to rotate it through uh, four or six different positions. Uh, with a CAD CAM abutment, it's been milled to go in one position. You only want it to go in one position and you don't want to have to go through a process of verification in order to know that you've got it in the right position. And that's where EV is just uh, really streets ahead of the rest of the pack because with its uh, asymmetric one position only index, uh, we can capture that with our scan flows in a digital impression. We can also, of course, capture it with our standard impression copings in an analog impression. And that one position can be transferred to the implant replica and then on, of course, to the abutment. And it's a very positive index. You can see the shelf uh, inside uh, the implant here. Um, and you can see the slots here. 
So you can imagine that as you rotate the abutment into position, the uh, splines on the abutment just drop down into place into those uh, slots. And as I say, we can capture that in the analog world using standard analog impression copings or by using a scan flow that screws directly into these uh, implants and really the wonderful prime scan uh, digital intraoral scanner. Now, uh, I've not been using this for very long, um, but long enough to tell you that I don't know what I was uh, fearful of. I don't know why I thought that an old dinosaur like myself, who's used to the analog world, should find it difficult to embrace this kind of digital technology, because honestly, it is so intuitive. I won't call it child's play. It takes a little bit of learning, uh, but it doesn't take a huge amount. And the machine is very responsive, as you see the camera you see on your left and the digital overlay on your right. And it picks up the most incredible detail, a detail of soft tissue, detail of hard tissue. And it gives you something that I actually absolutely love, which is the bite map which you see on the cusp tips and incisal edges here, the blue, green and red of the bite map showing us where the high spots are, uh, where perhaps the patient's not contacting and so on. And we can trim these models, make them tidier. Of course, they're very large files. So by trimming the models, you also reduce the size of them. Um, and uh, really it's possible after a little bit of practice to uh, take a full mouth of scans in little more time than, and perhaps less time in fact, than it would take you to prepare your custom tray uh, and, and take an analog impression and allow that to set. Now, I put this um, little cartoon here, not because uh, any of us experiences uh, on a daily, weekly, or even monthly basis, patients uh, vomiting as a result of analog impressions. Um, but I, I put it here because it ties in very nicely with the case that I'm showing you of the two implants in the posterior maxilla. And Jack, who introduced this evening, was uh, with me to treat this patient, so he knows the story. Um, you can see this is the prime scan digital uh, impression of this patient. The first thing that should strike you, for those of you not familiar with this technology, is how lifelike that looks. The texture of the mucosa, the, the wetness where there is saliva and the dryness where there is no saliva, the, uh, the luster and the, the glaze of the ceramic restorations and so on. And the really observant amongst you will notice some retained roots with a root cap on it. Why is that there? Well, the answer is very simple. This is the patient that convinced me that I had to move to intraoral scanning because uh, I had placed a very nicely, delicately designed horseshoe custom tray with Impragum, which was always my favored uh, impression material. And the patient was known to me as a gagger, uh, but he was extremely well controlled and he was fighting it and fighting it and he was calm. Uh, and we were just waiting for the Impragum to set. And I said to him, okay, the material is now set. And I said, I just want you to open a little wider so I can get the screwdriver in to unscrew the guide pins. And sure enough, the minute I put my fingers in his mouth with the screwdriver, he started gagging. And anyone uh, of you who's experienced this knows that once the patient starts, it becomes very difficult for them to stop. Now, he didn't vomit, you'll be pleased to know, but he did something actually far worse. He literally is a big fella and a strong fella. He pushed me away quite violently, I might add. Um, grabbed hold of the impression tray by its handle and ripped it out of his own mouth. 
bearing in mind that the impression was still locked into these two implants by the impression copings. So he ripped the tray and the impregum off of the impression copings. And as he ripped it out, he managed to completely fracture the core of a crowned tooth on the upper left second molar, leaving just the roots in place. Um, and, and in fact, that fracture was deep enough as to make that now an unrestorable tooth and they have since been extracted. So, uh, and he was never ever going to have another analog impression. So because of him, I said I would invest the time and effort in an intraoral scanner and we eventually got him back and Jack was there with me when we got this beautiful image with the intraoral scan. And here's the really great thing about the scanner. It's quite a big camera and it is quite intrusive in the mouth. But the minute the patient starts to want to gag, you just stop. You take the camera out and you start again a bit later because basically this is built up layer by layer. It's not, you don't have to take this in one sweep. You can take it in one sweep, five sweeps, 50 sweeps. It doesn't matter how many times you go in and out the mouth building up this image. And you can get really great soft tissue. Uh, let me just get rid of that. You can get really great soft tissue uh, imagery and the scan flow, which you don't see in the picture, is telling the uh, machine the orientation of the implants in that one position only orientation. And so here you can see beautiful images, upper and lower arches, you've got a nice bite map. So what can we tell from the bite? Well, immediately we can see that he's really in contact anteriorly and clear posteriorly. You can see that he's essentially been kept clear on the pontic of this bridge. There's just a, a contact on the mesial aspect. Um, he's got high spots here and one spot of high contact here. And this means that I should be able to place my implants uh, into a protected occlusion, which is important in a patient as big as him with a bite as heavy as he has. So this is a very useful tool and it's been a huge bonus to me from the restorative knowledge aspect. Something that of course I can't get from an analog impression. And even if the shading tool may not be 100% reliable, I'm not saying it's not, but I'm not saying it is, I do like to use it because rather than having to pick up 10 tabs in order to find my starting point, I can use the shading tool on PrimeScan to find out where my starting point is and then finesse the shade from there uh, using uh, my my own uh, um, experience, I suppose, and if necessary, the technicians as well. Uh, but it's nice to have that. And then that goes away and it gets printed and it gets printed in a very durable uh, uh, sort of plastic. Um, this is made to look the same color as Natha stone. Uh, and you'd be forgiven for thinking it was Natha stone, except when you go to touch it, and feel it, it is incredibly uh, hard and resilient, much harder and more resilient than Natha stone, to the extent that it's very hard for the technician to damage it or cause wear defects on it. So when it comes to contact points and occlusion, this material is very dimensionally stable. And I am going to make a statement now that is not um, said lightly uh, because uh, it, I wouldn't want to give people false hope. But I can tell you that with my technician, with my work, since I've gone to Prime Scan, I have virtually never had to touch the occlusion or the contact point of a single restoration that's come back. And that tells me a lot about the bite registration the uh, dimensional stability of the material. I do articulate all of my models though, which I know a lot of people don't. So I can't say whether that 
contributes or doesn't contribute. But uh, those models can then be taken back into the virtual world and sent off to Atlantis, uh, which again is another part of the dense glycerona world. And I'm not going to spend time giving you the whole Atlantis lecture tonight, uh, but I could give you a whole lecture on the Atlantis abutments. For those of you not using them, uh, you really have to. It's as simple as that. Uh, I've worked through every kind of abutment there is over the 30 years I've been in implant dentistry, from cast abutments to preppable abutments to uh, snap fit abutments like the direct abutment, um, other kinds of stock abutments. Um, nothing comes close. Nothing comes close to the superlative quality of an Atlantis abutment. Now, that's made even more so the case since the introduction of the custom base Atlantis abutment, which allows us to develop a screw retained restoration where the restoration is cemented onto the abutment in the lab, thus eradicating the issues that I know we've all seen with cement induced peri-implantitis where we're cementing these things in the mouth. So we don't cement in the mouth anymore, haven't done for a very long time. Uh, and I've published um, so far two out of three studies, two with uh, some Italian colleagues of mine uh, on the Atlantis system, where we've looked at the mechanical and the biological integrity of these abutments over up to four years in function. And I can tell you it's uh, unparalleled in terms of the lack of peri-implant mucositis and the lack of mechanical problems. Very few mechanical problems indeed. Um, so this information is passed to a milling machine and these abutments can then be milled in either zirconia or titanium or, or what we call gold hue titanium. And zirconia crowns can be milled to uh, be bonded on top, as I say, in the lab. And if you use the Atlantis uh, uh, abutment screws, they come with very small heads. So you can see here, the screw access holes are really quite small. They're exactly where they were meant to be in the mid fossy of the teeth, as we planned on the Simplant right at the start. And in terms of the transition zone, between abutment and crown. You could run a probe over this. You can hardly feel any ledge. It's smooth. These are the titanium abutments. They're smooth. You can just see the zirconia uh, inside here, uh, just before the shaded zirconia or the shading of the zirconia starts. It's a perfect fit. There's no cement. These can only go in one position because of the EV index. And they really lead to phenomenal uh, restorations. I mean, obviously my lab's done a beautiful job on the ceramics, the fissure detail, but as you can see, it becomes very difficult to actually, I mean, you can maybe see that screw hole, but it becomes very difficult to see these screw access holes. And here at the soft tissue level, really, it becomes actually very difficult to probe under these uh, restorations because the soft tissue becomes very, very tight around them. So here you can see, of course, a panoramic because he won't allow us to do intraoral x-rays because of his gagging. And if I overlay my Simplant plan, bearing in mind that I didn't use a guide, I did this eye to hand, uh, you can see that that's not a bad job. Uh, they line up almost perfectly. So uh, that's, the, um, that's the case. Uh, here's another case, an interesting case. Patient during lockdown fractured her right uh, bicuspid, second bicuspid, her right second premolar. She managed to see an emergency dentist who just put some packing in. And then later in the lockdown, she managed to fracture her second uh, premolar on the left. Um, quite remarkable. And uh, maybe it goes to show just how stressful people got during lockdown. Um, 
It's a slightly different case, this, because here uh, I'm doing the case on an immediate same day basis. So we're extracting the teeth. We're placing our Astra EV implants through the extraction sockets. We're using standard stock abutments. These are the Astra direct abutments uh, so that we can fabricate some immediate chair side temporary crowns. Now you'll see, if I can just draw a little arrow here, you'll see a little gap just here to the soft tissue. And that's because I've actually under contoured the crown because I actually want this soft tissue to come back down to here. So I actually play around with the shape of my temporary crowns. Uh, and I just say this as a little aside to try and improve the overall soft tissue contour. So those temporary crowns are placed on the same day that the teeth were extracted and the implants inserted. And they are actually, uh, they have no palatal cusps on them. So they're more like canines in shape, which means when the patient bites together, there's no centric contact. And of course, she's in canine guidance. So they're out of contact in lateral. You can see these are pretty sizable implants. One of the really nice things about the Astra EV though, is that the platform dimensions are tooth specific. So if we look at the implants used by her previous clinician, these are Straumann implants by the look of it. When you look at the dimension of the tooth and you compare that to the dimension of the implant, that's a pretty aggressive emergence profile and is often associated with peri-implantitis issues. Not that she has that here, I'm pleased to say. Um, what we're looking for is a much more gradual emergence profile. And we do that by having the right diameter implants for specific tooth positions. Anyway, uh, these are going to be picked up again by PrimeScan. And here are, again, beautiful uh, images. And I might say this, I, I'm not in general practice. I, I just do implants. Um, but if I were in general practice, I'd be using these images to sell a lot of dentistry because patients love to see these images. It's very simple to demonstrate to them deficient fillings, ugly uh, sort of stained composites with marginal deficiencies, fractured porcelain crown and bridge work. I mean, it's, it's endless what you can see with these images. And I suspect it's an extremely effective tool for selling more dentistry, if that's uh, what you're interested in. Um, Anyway, here you can see two implants, one on the left, one on the right. And again, we can see that she favors, it's interesting, isn't it? If we look at this bite map, she clearly favors her right hand side in so far as she's got very heavy contacts on the right and very light contacts on the left. What that tells me is that I have to tell the technician maybe to make the crown on the patient's right slightly lighter in contact. Uh, because we don't want heavy contacts on our implant supported restorations because of some of my work from a study I did very many years ago showed the most common complication in implant dentistry was always porcelain fracture. Uh, although I have to say in the days of zirconia now that may be less, less the case. So again, it's back to the world of Atlantis and you can see uh, these abutments being designed using what's known as the virtual abutment design software. We go for a, what's known as a very concave emergence profile. So if you look here, you can see how concave that is. That's my preference, what, what we call concave emergence profile. And uh, we uh, support or contour the soft tissues with the abutments. So the abutments themselves in that transition zone are giving shape uh, to the soft tissues. We can then import it into a software like ExoCAD uh, with a digital articulation as you see here and my technicians can design the crowns which can then be fully milled uh, in zirconia. And here you see the fully milled crowns already bonded to the, in this case, gold hue abutments, 
uh, that gives them this lovely gold color so that you don't get any gray shine through in the soft tissues. In the previous case, it was his posterior molars. He had a very low smile line. You'd never see anything there. The gold cure, I think, I believe a little more expensive, but it's well worth it. And again, look at this beautiful transition zone here. There's no ledges, no margins that you can probe or feel. There's no excess cement. Soft tissue loves titanium. It's quite fond of zirconia as well. So we get very, very tight soft tissues, almost non-probable uh, soft tissues. Um, and as I say, in our four year uh, biological assessment of these abutments, we had little or no uh, peri-implant mucositis at all. Uh, and that was over many hundreds of units of implants. And here you can see the two restorations fitted. Uh, you can uh, see the screw access holes. I've filled those just with uh, uh, PTFE tape. I get the patients back after three months. Um, and uh, then I check the screws are tight and I fill them. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to get this lady back because she does not come out of her house during any lockdowns. And of course, until after December the 2nd, uh, I won't be able to get her back. You can see a little bit of the metal showing of the stock abutment of her old Straumann implants. And I suspect the metal under the porcelain bonded crowns. Uh, and when you compare that to the quality of the restorations that we're looking at here, the way the soft tissues sit against them, the aesthetics. It, it's really just uh, beautiful. And, uh, and it, it's that way time after time after time with perfect contact points and perfect occlusion because of the dimensional stabilities of the printed restorations. And again, I draw your attention to the emergence profile. It's very gradual, very gradual. Uh, when you work with the EV system and you choose the right implant, much more gradual than that. And much more akin to what we see with a natural tooth. And that's how it should be. Um, these are longer implants than you might otherwise think you'd want. But of course, we pulled the teeth out and these were going straight through the extraction socket. So they had to go through the apex of the extraction sockets. And you can see how, how long the uh, extraction socket, how deep the apex of the tooth would have been somewhere here. So uh, that's why these implants are as long as they are. Um, so very, very nice restorations. Uh, I have to say that, um, you know, let me just go back here. People often say to me, well, what's, What's the most important bit of this jigsaw puzzle? Is it the simplant? Is it the implant? Is it the abutment? Uh, and now we can ask, is it the prime scan? I think the truth of the matter is that, you know, I've been working with simplant uh, for nearly 30 years. As I say, when we first started with simplant, it was just photographic paper. Um, I've been working with the Astra implant for 30 years. I helped to launch the system. I've helped to develop it since uh, its very earliest days. And in fact, I was the principal clinician working with the R&D department on the Astra Tech EV implant. So I'm a little bit biased, um, but I believe the idea uh, that we fulfilled of having a one position only index for the digital world was a, a, a groundbreaking uh, concept. And, and let me just say, by the way, that it actually also is a six position index for stock abutments. So it's two indexes in one, uh, and that's very clever. Um, and uh, took a lot of brainstorming to achieve that. Um, but of course, I believe that the AstroTech implant also delivers superlative biologic results. It is undisputedly um, uh, the implant that gives the smallest amount of marginal bone loss over time. Uh, and that is uh, going to be proven in a systematic review and meta-analysis that I'm due to have published in just 
uh, a month's time, just a few weeks time in the Journal of Oral and Maxillofacial Implants. We did a massive systematic uh, review of the three premium brands, Nobel, Strauman and Astra, with no preconceived expectation that they would show any real difference in their marginal bone loss data. Uh, but in fact, um, the Astra implant was statistically superior. Uh, then you've got the Atlantis abutment system. When people ask me what one thing uh, revolutionized uh, my implant dentistry over the last 30 years or say 20 years, given that I'm using the same implant today that I used 30 years ago, uh, other than its sort of evolution, uh, it is undoubtedly the Atlantis abutment system because uh, as I said before, this, this just took the quality of our implant restorations into a whole new sphere. You know, for years I'd worked with cast gold abutments and preppable abutments. And you knew that you didn't blow up the images of them too large on a, on a slide on a lecture podium when you're lecturing to 2000 people in an audience in the United States or whatever, because they look rough, they look shoddy, the margins never were perfect. Uh, and, you know, but it was the best that our technicians could do. Uh, but with computer milled abutments like this, you're talking about precision and perfection. And I think there was uh, definitely uh, still an issue with cement induced uh, mucositis when we could only place the abutment in the mouth and then cement the crown over the top. But with the advent of the Atlantis custom base abutment, particularly with the reangulating screw, so that even for front teeth, we can reangulate the screw to come out palatally. Now these crowns, as you've seen, can be bonded in the lab. They have these uh, perfect transition zones, cement free, screwed in. Uh, it, it's, it, it's just a joy. And uh, I think uh, undoubtedly, uh, the restorations I'm delivering today are the best restorations I have ever delivered uh, on the Astra implant. And, uh, and Atlantis, by the way, is multi-platform. It's not just for Astra. It's, uh, for, of course, for Zive and Ankylos, but it's also for dozens of other implant systems that are not dense splicer owners. So where does PrimeScan fit in? Well, uh, as I said right at the start, PrimeScan links the plan uh, to the outcome, really, um, in terms of digital workflow. You don't need it. You can do it brilliantly with an analog impression, but look at everything you lose. Uh, because I think you'll see in this very short presentation where I haven't been able to go into any real detail, you can appreciate the quality of the images, the value that those images bring to the table, you can see so much. When I'm trimming up those images, I see so much that I would not have seen uh, had I just pulled out an analog impression. Patients love to watch me doing it. They love to look at the images. They ask questions. As I said before, maybe you can show them other areas that need treatment. Um, so it, it brings so much to the table and it is so 21st century patients really appreciate that they are in a practice that is current state of the art uh, and up to date. So yes, the digital workflow, it, it definitely rocks my boat. I'm, I don't know what I was scared about. I don't know why I thought that I was perhaps too much of a dinosaur because I wasn't. I've, there's still a bit of life left in, in me yet. Uh, I think, and I am fully embraced now uh, in the digital world. And I actually wanna take this opportunity to thank Jack, who's been very helpful to me um, and for encouraging me. And uh, I wanna thank you all for listening. Thank you, Jack. I think uh, I'll stop sharing and you can take the screen back.
Yeah, thank you very much, Michael. Um, that was very kind of you. I, I appreciate you. Thanks. I actually, just on a personal note, you're probably one of the most interesting um, customers that I've worked with uh, when it comes to the Prime Scan. Um, as, you, as we said, when we got onto this call this evening, um, I had this exact case in my mind and it just so turns out, you know, that's exactly what you were talking about because it, again and again, it, it's, a, it's a case, that specific case you started with um, that what I do. Gagger, you mean? Yes, yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's a case I talk about all the time um, with other clinicians as a, as a fantastic example um, of, a, of a real difference uh, and improvement that the Prime Scan can make to someone's workflow. So. Uh, no, I really appreciate that and fantastic talk um, as always. Actually, that was my first time um, watching a, a lecture from you, and it was um, it was really informative. You squeezed a lot into uh, into forty minutes there, and you were bang on time. So thank you. Um, so with with that, um, we are moving into the fourth section, um, and in this section, um, we're going to look at some things to consider. Um, when deciding on the right digital implant solution and workflow for you. Um, so obviously we've seen uh, one from Michael already, um, but what should we consider? So uh, on screen is um, a basic representation of what a digital implant workflow looks like. Um, so starting with the steps involved, um, you can see it begins generally with uh, the data capture. Um, and this can come from, as you can see there, both a CBCT scan um, but also a prime scan scan as well, or an intraoral scan. Um, then follows is the implant planning. Um, so this is usually done on the um, CBCT software where we plan an implant, um, place where a possible guides um, sleeve could sit. Um, we then have the fabrication of the guide, whether or not that's done um, via a lab, um, or that could also be done in-house with this technology as well. So again, you know, although there is a digital implant workflow, there's many ways of achieving this, uh, whether it's mostly in-house, a little bit in-house or bits of both. Um, uh, we then have a digital impression once the implant is placed, um, when we've got the um, final soft tissue shape that we're happy with, we're ready to put that Atlantis um, scan flow in place or whatever scan body we're using, uh, basically a digital impression coping um, and then followed by any number of restorative solutions out there. And Atlantis being one. Um, so there are of course some variations in this workflow. Um, so uh, as mentioned obviously some of this can be done in in-house, uh, some in the lab, uh, specifically the one we're going to be showing you shortly in the next sort of five minutes um, is going to be a good marriage of the two. So we will look um, very briefly at fabricating a guide in-house um, as well as then having the final restoration coming from Atlantis. Um, so uh, it's important to mention, I think, before I get into any of these steps, um, that you should ensure that the technology provider that you choose offers open connectivity, um, because this is what will allow these differences in workflows. So obviously, we've got ni a nice workflow for in-house, a nice workflow um, with service providers like Atlantis, um, but it's important that the technology uses able to offer that functionality, whatever you decide. Um, years down the line after investing in the equipment. Um, so to start with, um, if we focus on the data capture, um, it needs to be both fast and accurate. So the benefit of a scanner is that it should be able to, in some ways, triple your speed of taking an impression. Um, again, to point to Michael's um, talk, um, Michael said that he could pretty much take a full intraoral scan in the time that it takes pretty much to prep one tray. Um, so, uh, I mean, this isn't just something that we look at from a manufacturer or dentist point of view. Um, studies would show uh, that about 84% of patients um, would prefer or, or did prefer um, digital impression taking to conventional impression taking. Um, I don't think that's surprising. Um, again, pointing at Michael's first case with the Gagger, um, that's a prime example uh, of one. Um, so I would say, you know, realistically with modern day scanners, and I absolutely don't think all scanners out there are able to do this yet, um, but there are scanners, especially with the prime scan, that are able to offer you a realistic two minute um, sort of scanning time for an upper and lower arch. Um, but importantly as well, um, it needs to be accurate, not just fast. Um, so as long as it's faster than traditional impression material, that's a, a benefit. Um, 
but we need that accuracy there for predictable results. Um, and also, again, I keep pointing towards Michael's thought, but also using this as an educational and communication tool for the patients. Um, scanners, uh, especially the prime scan comes with a massive screen. Patients can interact with it because it's a touch screen. They can um, rotate around and look at their mouth from different points of view. And it really does help um, sort of get them over the line in terms of agreeing towards a treatment. Um, so this scanner uh, for the data capture will be needed for the initial impression, if you're combining it with the CBCT for the purpose of creating a guide, um, but it will also be needed again later um, post-placement ready for the final restoration. Um, so I would say with the data capture, make sure it's fast, accurate uh, and easy to use. For the CBCT scan, um, as uh, part of that accuracy, um, the reliability and the predictability of the digital workflow, uh, the CBCT scanner um, also needs to be combined with this digital impression um, to allow for that implant and prosthetic planning. Um, so make sure one, the um, quality of the scan um, is excellent um, and that it's easy to use with intuitive software. Um, because if you are utilizing it, um, often um, it's gonna be software that you use in every day, at least not every week. Um, so definitely something to keep in mind when you're making that decision. When it comes to the implant planning, so it links into the CBCT software, um, you, it should allow you to easily virtually plan the implant case. Um, and that's taken into consideration both anatomical and bone quality prerequisites um, and consider both the implant and prosthetic requirements um, as part of that software. Um, software should also let you not just work with one system, um, but also freely send them to different labs and services um, to make different um, prosthesis. Uh, so for the guided surgery, um, you should ideally have the ability to combine the CBCT scan um, with an intraoral scan, uh, and that's from any scanner. Um, and that should provide a reliable and efficient way to plan for both implants um, and the prosthetics as well. Um, and again, in terms of uh, how open the software is, you should also be able to send this to a provider uh, to be fabricated. Of course, in the demo shortly, we'll show you how to produce that in-house. And I've got an example with me today as well. Uh, so uh, when it comes to the restorative part, um, again, just to uh, focus on this even more, being connected uh, is more important than ever. ever. Uh, and being digital makes that connectivity even easier because we've not actually physically got to send anything out. Uh, the lab can send us models back, but if we can send everything digitally, it speeds things up massively. Um, so there should be, as part of those softwares, um, it shouldn't just sort of allow you to do the plan and then dump you with a file uh, free for you to send over whatever um, sort of non-validated, non-verified um, platforms of, of data transfer. Um, ideally, as part of the software, it should have a dedicated um, portal um, to be able to send to different providers um, securely. Uh, and with every piece of equipment, um, this workflow is going to utilize a few. Um, manufacturers will always make their devices as easy as possible to use, or at least you'd hope so. But even with the easiest to use bits of equipment, um, training does always need to be provided, uh, especially in dentistry. Uh, being clinician led is obviously the best way. Um, so I would say when you're looking at this equipment, check what the support is like beforehand um, and check if there are courses running often, um, if you've got uh, local support from your rep, um, that sort of thing. Uh, and lastly, when it comes to service and support, um, Again, most manufacturers would hope uh, that any of their equipment has never any issues um, with anything. Um, but if they do appear over the years of use, um, make sure that manufacturer is obviously well established, well respected, um, has got a lot of experience in both digital impressions, but also CBCT scanning. Um, and again, when it comes to reps, make sure there is an easily reachable rep um, or hotline to ask some questions uh, and get you back on the right track. So uh, however you prefer to work, uh, we'll have a solution in place to make uh, your workflow. Um, I'd like to play some short videos now before we go into the demonstration, um, just to give you an idea 
um, of the equipment that we'll be um, actually using tonight. Um, so we'll start off, first of all, with a video on our intro scanner, the Prime Scan. Uh, we'll then move over to the CBCT scanner, the Axios, uh, which has just recently been released in the last month. Um, and lastly, we'll show a video which shows um, how other, other solutions work uh, in different workflows. Uh, and then we'll move into that presentation. The And there's the prime scan. So I've actually physically got a prime scan beside me. So when I do my demonstration, I'm going to be moving over to that. Um, but really, the prime scan um, it is a digital impression scanner, um, one of the best in its class, uh, without a doubt. Um, but the prime scan is an enabler um, of the digital implant workflow um, with solutions like Azento and Simplant, um, as well as digital restorative workflows um, with solutions like Atlantis and InLab. Um, but also we do have digital orthodontic workflow solutions as well with the prime scan and um, such as sure smile aligners. Um, so whatever the needs, um, we have a digital and seamless solution for it with prime scan uh, aside from the digital implant workflow. Uh, so now I'd like to show a quick video on the latest addition to our CBCT um, portfolio, which is the Axios, again, only released in the last month. So that was the brand new Axios. Um, so when we go into the demonstration, um, Adam won't physically um, have access to an Axios tonight, but he has got a scan, uh, which he'll be using on the software you get with the Axios. Um, so uh, that really will allow you to make full use of the digital potential of your practice, not just for implants, um, but for other workflows as well. Um, so. Uh, finally, I'd like to play a short video demonstrating um, all of the digital implant solutions available from Dents by Serona, um, from guide planning software, implants, um, to restorative and regenerative 
regenerative solutions. Uh, and once we finish that video, we'll then jump over into the into the um, demonstration. You and I are in this together. You and I can see where the future leads. Something in the way we can make that ascend so easily. Building all the trust in each other. There's nothing that the two of us can't achieve. I'll be on your side, making sure you have everything you need. Lose yourself in space and time. Choose to breathe and free your mind. Dare to take the dive and you'll be fine. Okay, so thank you for bearing with us through those videos. Um, hopefully you've seen just through those videos some ex some options for digital workflows that Dense Plus Runner provides. Uh, now we would like to show you a quick snapshot um, of an example of a digital workflow um, that we are gonna do shortly. But first, um, I would just like to introduce uh, my two colleagues here with me tonight. Um, so the first one on the left of your screen is Adam Cartwright and he is a digital imaging specialist and he will take you through the initial planning stage of the digital implant workflow and he'll then send his um, plan back to me um, while, I, while I'll take you through um, creating and designing an in-house guide. Um, we'll then move over to the digital impression once we've got the implant placed. Um, ready to restore the implant. And for that, um, once we've taken the impression, I'll be sending it over to my colleague, Jamie Thomas, um, who is the digital lab uh, territory sales manager. And he'll show us how a laboratory uh, would, digit would work digitally with patient specific um, digital prosthetics. Um, so hopefully in this next sort of 10 to 15 minutes, um, you'll see from start to finish an implant planned, guide planned, implant placed, mm -hmm. digital impression taken, uh, and custom abutment and crown made uh, digitally. Um, so with that, I'd like to hand over to Adam. Thank you, Jack. I'll just share my screen here and take over control from you. So you should, has, have you got my screen? Looks good. Yep, fantastic. So uh, first up, just to ex uh, mention, we, like with our CBCTs, where we've got a number of different options, depending on sort of how you want it to work within your practice, we've also got a number of options within the imaging family for implant planning. So as well as Simplant, which Michael's talked about today, um, and my Simplant, which is kind of the light version of that, all of our CBCT systems actually come with a SICAT implant planning software. Um, and that's the option that we're just going to go through tonight. Um, I'm just starting off here in our Sedexis um, imaging software. This is what comes with all of our different X-ray and camera solutions. And this is what you'd be using for storing your images and for integrating it into your practice management softwares within the practice. Um, and just like with PrimeScan and Omnicam and all of our other solutions, 
It's really, really intuitive, very simple to use. And you just work through a um, sort of simple menu going left to right from one option to the next. So once we've got our CT scan and we've got it loaded up, the next button along would be our planning option. And that will take us into our Psyca implant software. It's fully integrated within Sedexis. So again, all we do is now work along the next menu down. So when I go into prepare, the first button I have an option for is to import my digital impression. So if I'm using prime scan in particular, we'll get the maximum amount of data through. So what I'm gonna just do here is bring in a scan that I've got saved from one of my patients. Now, this particular case that we're bringing in is from a dense Plicerona Cerec system. So as well as the um, optical impression, what we're also going to have is the proposal uh, for that restoration that's been made on the uh, Cerec chairside system. So I'll bring that in. And then what I'll do is just give it a couple of quick reference points just to start that planning and that merging of data off. Now, if you don't have the full chair, um, the full chairside Cerec system, and you were using Prime Scan uh, or Omnicam, um, or even a third-party scanner, then you would just be getting in an STL, which is obviously a monochrome file. But the benefits of Prime Scan and Omnicam is that we can work in full color. So that's just going to take a second to merge that data together, and you'll see here that with the yellow line of my optical impression. That's done an absolutely perfect job of bringing those two data sets together. And what I've now got is my CT scan, my optical impression, and my final restoration proposal that's just taking the gap just there. So the next thing I'm gonna do is go to the next button along, which is to do my canal tracing. So I'm just gonna start on the cross-sectional here, and I'm just gonna start with my mental foramen, and I'm just gonna come in just there. Now I can actually carry out my planning on any of the views and any of the axis. So I'm gonna move across here and carry on. Nice and simple. You know, obviously it's a nice crisp, clear image uh, and this isn't using a high dose or anything. This is just sort of using the equivalent of sort of one to one and a half panoramics. So I've now got my canal trace. I've got my two data sets merged together. So the next button takes me to my planning, which is to bring my implant in. Now, because we've got the Cerex scan in here, it knows which tooth we already want to uh, restore. We can choose our implant system. So obviously I'm using Astrotech EV here. And then the artificial intelligence that's built into the um, SciCat implant software has also picked for me the most relevant or the most likely implant I might want to use. Um, and that's based on the sizes and all of the thousands of scans and cases that have been sent to SciCat over the years. So also here I can add my abutment if I know what I'm using, if I'm using a stock abutment. And I can also choose my sleeve system if I'm going fully guided. So for this one, we're gonna go full uh, in-house milled sleeve on drill system with the Cerec Guide 3. And when I press OK, that will place that implant for me on the correct tooth at the correct height based on my initial um, restoration proposal that we bought in from our scanners. Now, obviously you've got you know, full control here. So I'm just gonna pop into my implant aligned tab. And just here, we can then navigate 360 degrees around my implant site making any adjustments, any amendments that we want to make. We can do that as we go. We can change the angulation, we can change the position. You know, you're always in control of what you're doing here, but the software is gonna give you a cracking proposal right from the start. Now, again, you know, I was saying it's really, really easy and it's simple to do. So all we're gonna do is continue along our menu system here to treat. I wanna to get to the final tab, it's automatically giving me the option to now export the um, guide back to my Cerec system to produce that. Or my other options are I could send it up to SciCat. So if I wanted them to mill a full guide for me, they can do so. 
what they can also do is offer a service where they'll check your implant planning, they'll check your proposal, and then send you back the digital file for you to use uh, with a 3D printer or anything like that. So there's a number of different workflows depending on how you want to work in the practice. In terms of the fastest and sort of most efficient time-wise, then that's going to be to send it back to your CEREC system and to uh, sort of produce that guide in-house for you. So by pressing that button, it sends it back to PrimeScan and that sends the file back over to you, Jack. Thank you very much, Adam. Um, so I'm just going to share my screen now and I've got the CEREC software loaded up. Uh, and this is that same scan brought back into the CEREC software. It's got all of that implant planning information inside. Uh, and to very quickly show everybody through this, I have complete control over the thickness and the spacer um, of this implant guide. I can customize all of that. I can customize the support geometry um, around there as well. I also have complete control over the seating area. So I can control exactly where that's going to sit. I can make sure that it's that it's actually going to fit uh, in my um, actual block. This is the block around the guide there. Um, I can control as well how many seating windows I have and whereabouts they're placed. And the software will only let you place them where there's sufficient material strength. Um, and then we can make any final amendments to it. We can make certain parts less smooth. Um, if they're along at uh, Gingiva, um, we can smooth those out just using simple tools with our fingers. When we're ready to manufacture, um, this would be loaded in uh, to a CEREC milling machine, um, and that is the block that the guy will be milled from. Now, uh, I'm going to stop sharing my screen for a second, um, because we've already done one in advance. Um, and I appreciate this probably isn't going to come across amazingly well on just webcam quality, um, but this um, is the exact guide. Uh, which has been milled uh, and this was milled in about 35 40 minutes um, and this you can see fits perfectly um, on this model and there are also a couple of seating windows if you can make that out there um, just to make sure that that guide sits in place and you can see that there so uh, what we're going to do now is i've already got a model uh, the same model that has an implant placed um, so we can imagine we've got the implant placed the soft tissue formed nicely we're now ready to take that final impression and um, ready to do the final restoration or send to Atlantis. Um, we are now at that stage. So I'm going to share my screen again. And this time I'm in the Connect software, which is a piece of software which allows us to take a scan with the Prime Scan. Um, it allows us to take um, our digital impression code in as well. Um, and then we can then send that to Jamie, where he'll pick up um, on the rest of this process. So I'm going to pick the camera up um, and it really is as easy as pointing the camera just over the arch like that. Um, I could do full arch scanning here, um, but for the interest of time, I'm just going to do a quadrant. Um, and you can see um, because of the unique way that the time scan camera works, um, you can see that it's pretty much able to scan uh, the entire way into that implant. I'm just going to check I've got the interboxal spaces nicely scanned there. If I zoom into this, you can see that pretty much the entirety of that implant is scanned, uh, even on the inside. We don't need this information, but it's a good demonstration uh, of how far the prime scan is actually able to take that scan into the implant. Um, I'm then going to change over to the upper jaw. Um, so I'll take a scan of that as well. So I've just finished this scan. What we'll then do is we'll take a bite scan. And so we'll take a buffer bite registration. And just by getting the patient's bite together, um, and it is as simple as just scanning, again, that same area with the patient biting down. Within seconds, the software automatically links and articulates those two scans together. I'm going to pop my prime scan down for a second uh, while I put an Atlantis intraoral flow. Um, so it's really tiny, so it's probably not going to come up amazingly well on camera. Um, but this is like a digital impression token. Um, we pop that in place. So bear with me just while I tighten that up a little bit. Uh, and then we'll continue the scan. Um, 
just by clicking scan body lower, pick up the prime scan camera again, and you'll see on screen what this now looks like. Uh, within literally a second, the software's already picked up the exact location of that um, on our lower jaw scan. So we don't need to do this whole area again. It's literally just the information uh, around that scan body that we need. So just fill in that information. Uh, once we've got enough information around it, we can then process the model. Uh, we'll take one final look at the impression, check that we're happy with it, um, and then we can send over to Jamie. So if we just give this just a minute to send over, um, hopefully that gave you a good demonstration, one of um, the actual digital impression workflow with the prime scan, um, but also how quick the scanner was. Um, so it doesn't take any time at all, especially if you're scanning just a quadrant. Um, the prime scan camera is able to keep up with how quickly your hand is moving. Um, and we've specifically made uh, this new next generation camera technology like that um, because that is the feedback uh, that we get with dentists is a lot of the time dentists um, are working not necessarily with the technology um, they, they're kind of having to get used to the limitations of it by scanning slowly um, so this is able to scan quickly but extremely accurately as well I can see the final impressions here we can see I was able to scan the entire way into that implant and if I reverse this impression and um, you can literally see all of that detail on that side, which is incredible. If you think of the distance, um, I was able to get the camera just to the top um, of these teeth adjacent there, um, and it was able to scan that entire way down. It's incredible, and that's unique for the prime scan in terms of how the technology works. There's the Atlantis intraoral flow, and you can see that looks literally exactly like it did in real life. It's got all the detail there. It's even got the um, text on the side is incredible. Um, all we then have to do, uh, so I've just clicked the wrong one here, typical. Um, but from this stage, uh, what I've done there is I've selected the wrong scan body. So if we click Atlantis, uh, iOS flow. Uh, if we come back into that stage now, it will let me connect to the lab. Um, this is all done over the cloud. Um, so it takes no time at all, depends on your internet connection, it can take about 30 seconds to upload all of these scans to the cloud. Uh, you can see here on my internet, I'm streaming off two devices and it's still, still able to upload in about 20 seconds. While that's happening, I can utilise that time uh, by entering in the patient information. Um, I can select which lab I'm sending it to and tonight I'm sending it to the, the Jaden Dent Flatterona lab uh, where he'll pick this up. Um, I can put any notes in here for him. This is all done digitally. There's no physical notes needed. Um, so I could say whatever to him, type anything in there. That will get included in the case. Add it to my basket. Um, just like you do an online order, when you're happy, you just click Submit Card. It'll ask you to log in one final time just to verify you're happy with that. Uh, and there it is, because it's in the cloud, it's instantly sent over to Jamie because it's already uh, uploaded online. And with that, I'll hand over to you, Jamie. Thank you very much, Jack. I'm just going to share my screen with you all. So hopefully you can see that. Can you just confirm that with me, Jack? Yeah, looks great. Excellent. So what Jack's used tonight is the Connect K Center. And I've received that in my inbox from the technician's point of view. So you can see almost instantaneously, I've received the file here and it's automatically downloading the file format. Now I've just used a one we've sent um, on another occasion here. So you just get the idea of what's received from, from my end in my inbox. So I've got the details of the case in front of me. So for example, because of the planning that's been done beforehand, Jack has then identified this scenario as a, as a screw tame restoration. And what I can do then is actually check Jack scan and make sure that I'm happy with it. I've got enough information. And if not at this point, because I received the file so fast, I can communicate with Jack directly and say, actually, Jack, can you just take another scan of the scan flow, for example? I just need a bit more information. But in this instance, it's absolutely spot on. So I'm really happy with that. And what I can do at this stage now is I can download the file in my desired CAD format. So if you see here, just on my left-hand side, I've got various different 
file formats, such as InLab, STL, and Dental Project from ExoCAD. And in this scenario, what I'm going to be doing is downloading the, this as an InLab file. Okay. So what I can do is download the file format and open it in my InLab software. So at this point, what I can do is again analyze the scenario. I can just double check that scan flow again, make sure I'm happy. And what you can see because of the quality of the scan, you can see how much detail is actually picked up. And if you look just on the underside, you can see quite clearly because of the dynamic depth of the prime scan, it really has its supreme power and performance. So it, the detail I'm getting back is fantastic. So once I've manually registered the models, I've checked the occlusion and whatnot, I have the option to then send to Atlantis just on the right hand side here. So once I've sent to Atlantis, I make a prescription. Now this is really important that between the technician and the clinician, they have an understanding of what they want from this restoration. Because as Michael mentioned earlier, that Atlantis abutments are created using VAD, virtual abutment design, and guided by the technicians in-house at Mundal. Okay, so it's important that you have an understanding of the type of emergent profile you want, the emergent width, to make the most of that really nice soft tissue sculpting that Jack's provided for me, which is fantastic. So in this scenario, I've requested a gold hue custom base solution. And what I can do at this stage is, once I've sent the abutment, Atlantis will send me back design proposals. Now, they send you them as images, as standard. So I can look at these from this point of view and for the Atlantis editor, which I'm going to talk about in a moment, you would have to communicate with the technicians via writing notes in this dialog box at the bottom. But because I've got the beauty of Atlantis editor now, I can launch that. And what I can do is actually view the equipment myself from the Atlantis design point of view. I can see the screw access channel there. I can just clear the crown away and the lower arch if necessary and really start to review and analyze my abutment, okay. And for example, if I'm not too happy with the design, for instance, if I think, oh, actually, from the buccal aspect, I wanna just extend this margin slightly. What I can do is utilize the Atlantis editor with the show editor option, which is just here on the right-hand side. And what I can quite easily do is start to manipulate this abutment. So I just get it from the occlusal aspect. And I just grab these little handles I can start to chop and change my abutment design. So if I want to extend it occlusally, for example, distally, mesially, you've got various amount of options. So you can use the handles, which you can see on screen, or you can actually change the, the design of the abutment using increments on the left-hand side here. So it's a really smart, really intuitive, easy way to analyze your abutment and make sure you're happy. You've also got tools such as your measurement tool, for example, so you can check the clearance. And you can also take a screenshot and send notes directly to the design technicians at Atlantis, for example. So we can write a comment in the bottom here and send the comment directly to Atlantis. And it's a really smart way of working and really creates a nice community workflow. So once that's done, what I can do, I can utilize Atlantis core files. Now this is fantastic in terms of efficiency and creating a really smart seamless digital workflow. So I'm happy with that abutment design. What I can do, I can say, right, can I have the core file? So I download the core file, which is a digital file of the abutment. So while the abutment's being manufactured, what I can do is start to design my crown. So I'm aware this isn't the same case, but I just wanted to show you this to give you an idea of how core files work. So my abutment has been integrated into my in-lab CAD software, like so. The margin has been depicted. And what I can do is generate and create my own crayon restoration. Now, the core file with custom base comes with the screw access channel as well. So I know exactly where to put my screw access channel. So it creates a really nice slick workflow. And using in-lab, which is a really nice feature, what I can do is create a anatomical crown nice and easy based around biogeneric variation, which is the similar, similar software which Serif have made so prominent in, in 30 years. So we've adapted that into InLab. And what it does essentially, it uses an algorithm that takes into account the surrounding environment and creates the ideal proposal. Now, this 
particular scenario hasn't got a lot of anatomical information. So you can just choose the one which best suits this situation. And then with that being said, what I can do, fabricate my crown in my desired material of choice, zirconia, for example, combined with a titanium abutment, it gives you the ideal scenario for your clinician in terms of compatibility with the implants. And from a technician, my desired preference in terms of material choice. So it's a really significant advancement in terms of two piece um, screw retained scenarios. And hopefully from you see that from Adam to Jack to myself, it creates a really nice, slick, streamlined, seamless digital workflow. And on that note, I'm going to pass you back over to Jack. Thank you very much, Jamie. Uh, so bear with me just a second and I'll share the presentation again. Uh, so uh, we are coming to a close now. We've got a few more bits. Um, but first of all, um, just on that um, demonstration note, uh, that was just one example where a guide was milled on the same day as the planning. Um, so the implant could be placed on that same day. Um, but obviously there are other digital um, workflows as well, utilizing labs for the guide. Um, really, it just opens the possibilities for you to do that kind of thing. So uh, with that, we are coming to the final part of the presentation. Uh, so um, I'd just like to cover a few, few very, very quick bits because I realize we're just um, running slightly over time uh, about dense by Serona. Uh, and then once we've gone through that, we'll um, begin the Q&A session. So uh, I think we've had a few questions come through. If you've got any more, um, please pop them in uh, ready for when we get there. Um, so about dense by Serona. Uh, so I'm proud to say uh, that we are currently uh, the largest dental manufacturer uh, of equipment and supplies uh, in the dental industry. Uh, I'm not sure if people already realize that coming into this. Um, in the UK, uh, we are headquartered in Surrey, um, but our global headquarters is in the United States. Uh, but the majority of our equipment is uh, made and manufactured in Germany. Uh, globally, we're a 15,000 strong team with an annual revenue of about 4 billion US dollars in 2019. And that's split evenly across the globe. Um, so we're not uh, centric in, in any sort of part of the world. Uh, our purpose and mission is to every day empower uh, dental professionals all across the world to provide millions of patients with better dental care and make people smile. Uh, and we empower clinicians through innovation. Um, we are the global technology and innovation leader in the dental industry. We currently spend upwards of about $150 million a year uh, to advanced dentistry. We also have the largest research and development platform in the industry with over 600 scientists and engineers. Uh, so we truly have, especially from tonight, we truly have a solution for every workflow and every need that you may have as a clinician. And um, after tonight, I really hope you'll consider letting Dents by Serena be the partner on your uh, own digital journey. Um, if anything that you've seen tonight is of interest to you, um, I'd like to make you aware of our website. If you visit it and click on that orange button, um, you can book a one-on-one -on -one consultation with any product specialist, um, whatever you desire. It's all on the website. You can click, it's all done digitally, um, and you can book a demonstration that way without having to call anybody. Um, and that's what the page looks like. Just click what product you're interested in and you can book any time. So um, now we're nearly at an end. Um, I'd like to say for anyone that needs to go, uh, thank you for attending our event. Um, and thank you to Dr. Michael Norton um, for your uh, amazing contribution tonight. And also thanks to Adam and Jamie. Um, so uh, for anyone that'd like to stay, we will now open up for any questions. Um, so uh, please post them in. I'm gonna just have a quick read through the chat now, um, just to see if anything has come through. Uh, so we'll try and go in chronological order here. Um, we've had a question for you, Michael, from Matt Dilworth. Um, do you place PTFE tape only in screw access holes and send them away before getting them back after three weeks to then retighten and fill access holes with composite? Also, do screws always lose some torque after these three weeks? Uh, thanks very much that um no i 
usually put a small layer of uh, a temporary restorative material called Telio, uh, which is actually from uh, Ivoclar, um, over the top of the PTFE. Um, however, for single teeth, uh, sometimes I'll just use the PTFE. Actually, I leave it for longer than three weeks. I get them back after three months. Um, and the answer to the last bit of the question is uh, actually no, the screws are rarely loose. Um, if you ask me to put a figure on it, I'd say less than considerably less than 10% of, of screws come back uh, loose. So, uh, you, you know, in the days where I was cementing crowns over my Atlantis abutments, I never had the opportunity to check if the screws were coming loose because I didn't have a screw access hole. Uh, and the interesting thing about that is uh, my practice has never been uh, burdened by any, you know, large numbers of these things coming loose. So maybe it's not necessary, but since we now have the screw access hole in the custom base abutments, uh, with the zirconia crowns, uh, I think it um, behoves us really to just get the patient back after three months, check the screw is tight, which it will be in 99% of the time, I suspect, uh, and then fill with composite. Excellent. Thank you, Michael. Uh, and thank you for the question. Uh, there is a question uh, which I can answer here from Amir. Um, and he says, uh, or he asks, is the uh, are PrimeScan SDL files open source? Uh, yes, absolutely they are. So um, by default, they're saved as a proprietary Dense by Serona file in full color. Um, however, all of these files can be openly exported in SDL format. Um, the SDL format then also embeds the byte scan into it. So you only have two scans to deal with. So two SDL files to do or deal with an upper and a lower. You don't have a separate byte. Um, that's all embedded in the, in the actual information itself in the file. Um, so it's quite a, a nice way of doing it. Uh, we've also got another question which I can answer from Joe. Uh, what kind of training do you provide after the purchase of the scanner? Um, so, uh, fantastic question. Um, we've got plenty of training um, for something like a prime scan without the Serex software. So for somebody looking to do this sort of workflow, not necessarily looking to do in-house guides or in-house implant restorations, um, it would be mainly simple training um, over at the practice. Um, so that's in-practice training. Um, and then you get as much support as you need after that if you've got any questions. Um, you can always pop those along to us. Um, if you're in my area, it'll most likely be me covering the training with you. Um, it's a little bit different if it's a Serec Prime Scan, because there's, uh, which is the same machine, but it comes with the Serec software from the start. You can always add the Serec software onto the um, other machine. It's exactly the same, um, but you can do that at a later date. So with the Serec software, um, you'll need to come on a two day new user course um, with a dentist and technician. Um, and then we'll also have in-house training on top of that as well. So there's a bit more to it because obviously you've got um, staining and glazing and that sort of thing uh, and materials that you'll need to, to look into uh, in the training with that. Uh, and so far, that is it for the questions. So um, I think we probably would have had any final questions through by now while we're answering those. Um, if anyone wants to pop a quick one in, feel free. Um, but I'm just going to reshare my screen. Uh, and just say uh, thank you for everybody for attending. Um, doesn't look like we get any, anything through in terms of questions. So I think it's safe to call it a night there. Thank you very much for joining us. And thank you uh, for giving us an extra 10 minutes um, longer than we asked for. Um, hope this small event has been enough to ignite your interest um, in this sort of workflow in digital. Um, and again, we're running more of these evenings um, every Monday. Um, so just visit the Dense Plaster on a website um, and you can see what topic is being discussed every Monday. And we've got different speakers talking about different topics um, there. And we've got a final one. Uh, just a thank you coming through there. Thank you, Steve. Thanks for joining. Uh, thanks, Jay. Uh, so with that, I'd like to say have a good evening and goodbye. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.